Yo guys, Y Football here, and today we are going through and ranking all of the performances of all 24 teams during the group stage of Euro 2020. Now, this video took a hell of a long time to make because I made a presentation for all 24 teams. So, any support, feedback would be much, much appreciated. Also, going through, I looked at my like, uh, my subscribers from last 28 days, and 62.7% of people watching are not subscribed. So, I'd really appreciate if you subbed. It'd mean the world to me. I put a lot of effort into these videos, especially this one. This was a hell of a lot of effort. Almost basically my whole day went into this. So, yeah, let's get into it with number 24, who is North Macedonia. Now, let's be honest, I didn't expect these lot to get in, and they went out as quickly as I thought they would. They scored zero points. They managed to score two goals at least. Their best player was Pandev, and it was nice for him because this was his, like his last games for the country. But yeah, I didn't expect them to go in to the Euros. I didn't expect them to get out of the group stage. They did as much as they could. I'm happy for them. I'm happy for their fans. They managed to experience the Euros. Doubt they'll be next time. Let's go into the next club. 23 Turkey, my country, stunk out the whole gaff. Meant to be the dark horses, end up being the dark donkeys. Did absolutely nothing. We lost our first game 3 0 after parking the bus. We then lost again to Wales 2 0. And then we managed to lose again to Switzerland 3 1. Every game we conceded more than two goals. I've already ranted enough about them on my channel. You can probably check them out. Probably some funny videos. Conceded eight goals in three games, which is not good enough. Only scored one goal. Jenny's Undal was the only highlight because he actually made stuff happen from the wing. But the rest of the players just absolutely awful. Let's move on to the next team. 22, Scotland. Now, long time making the Euros. They finally made it. And unfortunately, they weren't in it for too long. Only three games. But the highlight for them is that they did manage to get a point against England at Wembley, which was sick. You know, like the Scotland fans coming over, taking over London, basically. It was wicked, man. <laughs> Some funny fans. But yeah, they did their thing. They, to be fair to them, they created chances. Like if they actually had a competent striker up front instead of Che Adams, they actually would have scored some goals. Like against England, they had chances. Czech Republic, they had chances. Just they conceded too much, didn't score enough. Story of football. Next team, 21, Poland. This was a surprise, kind of like Turkey in a way. They really underachieved. One point for Poland. Lewandowski, he was their best player. He scored some goals, but so I'm talking about when you say you need support for a player. They just really stunk it out. Like their group was favourable, to be fair. Like at the start, Spain aren't really, like you consider them a top team, but they're not even really it. In fact, their only point came against Spain. Slovakia, Sweden, beatable teams, but yeah. Just couldn't get anything done. Their team just didn't gel. On to the World Cup, I guess, for them. they got to fix some major issues. In 20, we've got Russia. Now, these lot, man, I don't know what's happened to them. In the 2018 World Cup, they were a different gravy. I don't know whether it's the home country, whether it was the fact they were at home. They beat Spain in that. They got through the group stage last 16. I don't know whether the government forgot to dope their players before the tournament. Clearly, they forgot to take their steroids or something. Because all of their players just went to in the bin. They got spanked 3-0 against Belgium. They managed to beat Finland. Okay, anyone could beat Finland. They're a bit of an average team. And then they got spanked against by Denmark. Fourth, three points, 20 from my list. On to the next team. Slovakia, 19th. Now, Slovakia is a weird one, right? Because they've got some decent players like Hamšík, uh, Skriniar, who's actually their best player of the tournament, in my opinion. But, like, they, they have the core, but you need more players right in the Euros. You need players that are going to step up and do their thing, and they just didn't have it enough in them. I thought they could have made it, but then, because they, they beat Poland, they lost to Sweden, but it was a tight game. And then against Spain, oh, my God, they got spanked 5-0 by Team Spain that couldn't score a goal in the previous two games, basically. They had, like, one goal in two games, and they just got completely steamrolled over by Spain, which was unbelievable. But, yeah, that's them out. Because, yeah, three points, minus five goal difference, wasn't going through as a third place team. I guess they try and prep to go for the World Cup, just like most of the teams on here at this stage. But that's them in 19th. 18th, we've got Finland. That, just like um, Russia, I didn't have, I, I kind of had hopes for them. Um, because, like, they've got a decent goalkeeper, they've got some decent players dotted around, but yeah. Just didn't do much at all. Their only win came up against Denmark. And let's be honest, the Denmark players weren't even in the right frame of mind after what happened to Ericsson. They got lost to Russia. They lost to Belgium. 
they just they only scored one goal in the whole tournament, only conceded three. It was just an average tournament for them. Let's be honest, they get knocked out. Um, well, they might might have got through actually. I haven't checked the table yet, but they're in third place. Probably not got through. But yeah, that's that's Finland for you. Seventeenth, we have Ukraine now. This was a weird one, right? Because this is probably the easiest group, let's not lie. Netherlands, Austria, Ukraine, North Macedonia. You're going to beat North Macedonia, so I don't really count that as a win, to be honest. But they beat them. They did their job. They all, I'm giving them 17 because they almost got a point against Netherlands. That, like, they were 2-0 down. They pulled it back to 2-2 and then Dumfries scored. But yeah, I give them one point for that. And they were tight against Austria. So I feel like it was touch and go if they got six points or Austria got six points. They got three points, so... It is what it is, Ukraine in 17th. 16th, we have Denmark. Now, obviously, who they, they get through in second, but who knows what would happen if they had Christian Eriksen. I'd like to say, first of all, condolences to himself, his family, after what happened. It was a horrible, horrible moment on the football pitch. I don't wish that upon anyone, no matter what club, country they're from. It was just a sad sight to see. I'm happy he's doing well. I don't know if he will ever play football again. But yeah, you could tell like Denmark players weren't the same after that because they lost to Finland and then they lost to Belgium as well. But they turned up in the final game against Russia. And this was one of those groups where Belgium beat everyone. So it was literally, they all just like did a round robin on everyone beats everyone else. So that all the uh, Belgium, uh, sorry, Denmark, Finland and Russia all finished on three points. And it was a goal difference thing to see who comes out on top. Unfortunately for them, it was Denmark. Their keeper, Kasper Schmeichel, did bits. Oh, I went too far. 15th, we have Hungary. Now... Only two points, but honestly, round of applause to Hungary, man. Honestly, round of applause. This was the group of death. I felt so sorry for them they got put in this. And you know what? They didn't complain. They rolled their sleeves up. They got stuck in and they managed to scrape two points in that group. Honestly, unbelievable. They drew to France and Germany. Like, they did better than Turkey. They did better than my country and they were in the group of death. Like, honestly, props to Hungary, man. They put their bodies on the line. When um, Fiola scored against France, wow, the whole stadium erupted in Budapest. Their keeper, Gulasi, Gulachi, however you pronounce his name, he did bits. Man, they were so close to getting through as well. Honestly, props to Hungary, man. Because if, you, if they play like that, they'll be a force for anyone. On to 14th, Czech Republic. Now, they have Willeni or Patrick Schick up front. He's the go Donny that's got the halfway line goal. And he's actually doing bits. I think he's got three goals in the tournament now. They, they finish third, but they will qualify based off the um, third place, best third place team, right? And yeah, well, like they they beat Scotland. And then once once you win the first game, you, you're set up, right? And then they drew to Croatia. So they're basically through going into the England game. They kind of like stood off England a lot. That was kind of a boring game. But yeah, they're through. They did their thing. They go on to the groups, um, knock around, see what they can do. 13th, we have Croatia. The, these lot were a letdown for me. I'm not going to lie to you. I put them just ahead of Czech Republic because they finished just ahead of them. But if I'm honest, it, I could have put Czech Republic there because they had Modric did his thing. But wow, the game against England, I feel like England were there for the taking if Croatia really attacked them, but they didn't really do anything. Against Czech Republic, they were very passive. Okay, that was a bit of like a dodgy penalty Czech Republic got. But even then, you can turn the game around. And then against Scotland, it was 1-1. And then Modric turned up big time, got a wicked outside the foot goal and yeah they're through i guess that's what matters the group stage as long as you get through the group stage it don't matter where you finish like portugal they drew all their group stage games and went on to win the euros last time so they're through let's see what they do now in 12th i put wales the team uh, other team in the turkey group the next one actually after turkey and yeah they had they, they did better than i thought to be fair they drew against switzerland a bit fortunate in my opinion they beat us that was deserved and then they lost to Italy, but let's be honest, Italy were already through. They kind of took their foot off the gas. That's why I, I put them uh, lower than Switzerland, which I'll talk about in a sec. And then 11th, Switzerland. So, yeah, even though Wales finished above Switzerland, I'm giving Switzerland the edge because when they played each other, Switzerland actually were a better team than Wales. Um, Embolo was on form, and if he actually took his chances, Switzerland would have won that game. And they're only below on goal difference, right? And that's because... When Italy came to play, um, uh, what's their face? Wales, they just, they, they kind of took their foot off the gas, as I said before. Once it was 1-0, they just moderated the game. It wasn't like Switzerland, where they wanted to get more goals to be assured of their, um, of their first place finish. 
Moving on to the top 10, we start with Portugal. Ronaldo's team, top goal scorer. They finished third. They kind of scraped it. In what happens to actually be a very, very interesting group. This was probably the best group. As we all assumed, it was really good all the games. Penaldo, three penalties of his five goals. Scored them all, though. And yeah, they, they scraped the win against Hungary. I know it says 3-0, but I think the, the 87th minute or 86th minute when they scored their first goal, then it was like the floodgates opened. They got absolutely romped by Germany 4-2 and then nicked a point at France. So they're through in third. Hey, look, if they go on to win the tournament, finish in third, no one will say anything like last Euros. But I was a little bit disappointed in Portugal because I, I think this is a better team than what won the Euro 2016. They've got, the, they've got Bruno on better form. They've got uh, Ruben Diaz, etc. They've got some pretty decent footballers, Diego Jota. But yeah, they've finished third below Germany. France was expected, but below Germany. Let's see if they turn up now. Uh, in ninth, we have Spain. So they finished second in their group, which is a massive letdown for them. They sh In that group, there's no excuse not to finish first for Spain. They just The way they play football, man, is just pass, pass. The decline of that country is unbelievable. From having players like Busquets, Iniesta, Xavi, to having Busquets and nobody. Irrelevant players. Literally, when I looked through that Spanish squad, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, where where did these players come from? They used to have amazing footballers. I'm Eric Laporte from France to Spain. Should have just stayed at France, to be honest. Like, Spain, they, they were average the first two games. I thought they could have been out. To be fair to them, they turned up against Slovakia. They played beautiful football. And they won 5-0. Got through. I guess they're in second now. I think they play Croatia, maybe. Um, which will be a really good game. But yeah, that's that, that's that's a wicked um, result for Sweden, who I'll talk about in a sec. But yeah, they finished, they're through, I guess, at second, but a bit underwhelming for my liking. In eighth, we have Austria. Now, should they, do I deserve to put them eighth? <clears throat> Maybe not, but I'm ranking this based off their group stage performance, not just based off their name. They had six points, so I can't really put them lower than eighth. Like, there's some teams ahead of this that got less than six points. So... What like what what can I what can I say? They they got sick they beat Ukraine and Austria, they lost to Netherlands. It's expected, but they did the job at the end of the day. Football isn't written on paper. Alaba did their thing. Do I think they're gonna get fine knockout stages? Not really, I'm not gonna lie. But they did finish second with six points, so congrats to them. In seventh we have Germany. Now, Germany I feel like unlucky. They scraped second against Hungary. They scraped it by the skin of their teeth. Goretzka literally scored with like two minutes left. But in every single game, okay, bar Germany, a bar uh, Hungary game, against France, they played better than 1-0. They probably deserved the draw. Against Portugal, they played amazing. Like, it should have been more than 4-2. Hungary was a bit average, but they created chances. Germany are an efficient football team that will get the job done. And they're playing England next, which will be an amazing game. Gozen's at left-back. I was unsure about him coming into the tournament. They didn't have a proper left-back. Like, obviously, lam has gone. But he did his thing, to be fair. Like, against Portugal, he was amazing. So, yeah, I'm putting them in seventh. They finish second. Four points It's enough to go through in second. They do get an unfavourable draw for the, in England, which will be a tough game. But, yeah, let's see who goes through after that. In sixth, I have France, who finished top of that group on only five points. Yeah, France probably favourites to win the tournament. But, like I said, I'm basing this off the group stage performances. They beat Germany. Good. They drew to Hungary, which I don't, I don't think anyone expected that. And they drew to Portugal. So only five points. If you're the best team, technically you get nine points. It, it doesn't work like that. But if you're the best team, you get nine points. Mbappe did his thing. He scored a beautiful goal against Germany that was ruled out. But yeah, France, they'll kick it into game. Uh, knockout stage, I'm sure. But I'll put them in six. In fifth, I'll put England. Um, literally best player, John Pickford, only because they kept a clean sheet the whole in all three games. There was no really standout players for England, which worries me. I feel like they've scraped all three games. Croatia, they scraped a 1-0. Scotland easily could have won that game, 0-0. And the Czech Republic, they sc uh, s scraped a 1-0 win. They've got through in first. That's their job done. They played Germany now, which will be a bigger test than these three teams. I'll tell you that for sure. I put them in fifth because they did top their group. And on seven points, you can't really put them lower than top five, to be honest. In fourth, we have Sweden. Wow, the surprises of the tournament by far. Sweden first. Without Zlatan, I thought Nizat would finish third or fourth. But they turned up. Forsberg did his thing. Isaac, 
the Arsenal target did his thing. Wow, they drew against Spain in the first game and then they beat Slovakia and they beat Poland. You cannot turn your nose up at that. I know people are going to say, whoever got Sweden, they're going to be like, oh, lucky break, we didn't get Spain. But hey, if they play anything like they played in those past few games, it'll be a tough game against Sweden. I'm putting them fourth. I know there's teams like France, Germany, Portugal, I'll put lower than them. But this is based off form and group stage performance. They're finishing fourth for me because they played amazing. In third, we have the Netherlands. Uh, so the, fr the three teams left all have maximum points. They have to finish in the top three. Uh, Netherlands got nine points. Doom Freeze was amazing at right back. I think he had more shots on target than the whole England team at one point. Just bombing up and down, scored the winner against Ukraine. The reason I'm putting them third and not second or first is three reasons. One, because they scraped a win against Ukraine. Secondly, their group was piss easy compared to the others. And thirdly, I don't trust Frank De Boer at all. Like I don't I don't trust the man. I feel like their group stage performance could have been like for the teams they had, it could have been better. But I'm putting them third. Well well played, they had nine points, did what they could. In second, I'm putting Belgium. Uh, Roman Lukaku did his thing for Belgium. Like his post up play, like his basketball man, he's posting up, putting his back in the defender, making stuff happen. Wow. I mean, Belgium, once again, only one goal conceded, seven goals scored, maximum points, won every game. But the most impressive one for me was against Denmark. They conceded early, their heads did not drop. They turned it around in the second half and a hell of a turnaround performance. That's a confidence-boosting performance. I've literally put them second, uh, I put them ahead of uh, Netherlands because their group uh, was easier. But then the team that's finishing first... Italy, the best team in the group stage by a mile, conceded zero goals, scored seven, blew away all the opposition, to be fair. And it was t kind of a tough group going into it. So Wales, Switzerland, Turkey, that's three like, decent teams, no pushovers. Turns out Turkey were pushovers. They blew Switzerland away and then they just managed the game against Wales. For a team on paper that didn't look all that, they had the pride of Italy. They played for their country and you have to put them first. They're no scrubs, Italy. Coming out of the group stage, they're definitely the most formed team. And they've had the most rest as well going into their um, knockout games. But yeah, that's been me ranking all 24 teams uh, from the group stages. Let me know what you thought uh, of my rankings and what your ranks would be. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy. I appreciate all the support and also feedback if you didn't like something about my video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.